and go put those back where they belong.
to our service for today. I'm going to first light the first Advent candle since I gave you last Sunday off as a little vacation. So, um, and then I'll do the announcements and then I'll go ahead and light the second candle. So, I'll do the first one today. Our first candle is peace. Our Advent joy begins with rules of growth. We are on the way to where God would have us be. And we're not there yet. How shall we go? We shall go together as one body, living and trusting in one another. We shall go as a community of faith, working side by side, and leaning into the grace of God's every step of the way. We shall go in peace. Isaiah says that in days to come, the nations shall stream to the mountains of the Lord, and there will be beasts soared into plowshares, and spears into pruning hooks. There we will learn war no more, for God will teach us peace. And we light the first candle as a sign, as a burning as a sign of peace among the people. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, that God may teach us the way of peace. Come, O coming man. For our announcements this morning, uh, I'd like to just lift up a couple of things up to you. The UMW uh, meeting today after church in the elevator room. Uh, you should have an email on that or some kind of phone call. Uh, stopping money and Thanksgiving uh, offering for that. And then also next Sunday evening, December 5th, will be our night of sharing in the Christmas spirit here in the church. And if you are willing to share your special talents, I'll have you talk to either Kelly or Darcy, or excuse me, Brenda. Where's Brenda? There you are. Uh, so if you have any, if you'd like to share a special talent, whatever, that's next Sunday evening at 7 o'clock here in the church. So we've been doing that the last few years and been just kind of nice. So or you just want to come and, and share and, and listen to the Christian spirit. So, all right. Are there any other announcements this morning? Yes, Betty. Well, we haven't really talked about it because the second Thursday is always been one way to it. So, if anybody wants to go up on the Thursday. It's Thursday? It's too late to go on the third one. Okay, so if anyone wants to go next Thursday, this coming Thursday, come about 9 o'clock or so, run that time, and they'll be happy to help you. So, okay, all right. Any other announcements? And then for our prayer request, as you see the listed in your bulletin, but I just want to lift one up for you. Uh, Sue's uh, great nephew, uh, of course, they live in, Sue's family lives in England. Uh, her great nephew is named Alice Bedford. And found out he has bone cancer. He's 12 years old and has bone cancer. And so we just want to lift Alice Bedford up in our prayers as well, and as well as those on our uh, prayer list of the Devon Major family of, of Jackson, his father passing away, and uh, Harriet and Bertha and Dawn, George and Gary and, and Gerald as well as New Hope Camp. So keep those in your prayers. And also the Court Conference prayer list uh, lifts up our pastors and the leadership of the Churches of Lund, Egan, Kentmere, Mitchell Fusion, Drake, Ethan, Carrollton, and Sue Falls and Grace. So let's just have a time of prayer. And those are the concerns we have this morning to God. Gracious God, we just lift all these concerns up, and especially uh, Alice, who found out he had bone cancer and was 12 years old, just again be with him and others uh, during this joyful season and uh, are going through a terrible, either a terrible loss or some kind of illness. Just Lord, just be with them and guide them during this time, and knowing that you are there with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Now I'll light our second Advent candle and then we'll go on to our Christmas monster. <clears throat> our second candle, the first candle is peace, the second one is a candle of hope. Every 
every journey faces the unknown, and worries can sometimes overwhelm us. There's too much to do. Our lists are too long. Our calendars are filled up. And we worry that something will go wrong, or we won't end up in the right place, or take the right route. Getting lost is a real possibility on a journey, and yet we claim hope for the journey, because we follow the one who will travel with us and sustain us on our way. Isaiah says that there is one who is to come, who will be the fulfillment of our hope. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on this one, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. We place our hope in this one. So we now light the candle of hope to give us strength for the journey. Come let us go to the mountain of the Lord that God may teach us the way of peace and hope. Come. Oh, come in there. Now I can turn the service over to the prison. Please join us in the call to worship. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Let the light shine, dear God. Let the light shine. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son has been given. Prepare a highway for our God. May straight a path for our God shall come. Let the light shine, dear God. Let the light shine. For unto us and inside of us a shoot of new life has sprouted forth. And forth from that shoot there is a rose ever blooming. A peace, a rose of peace and joy. A rose of love and mercy. A rose filled with the new life Jesus given in Jesus the Christ. Let the light shine, dear God. Let the light shine. Everybody please stand if they're able. For I'll come on you faithful on 234. I'll sing verses 1 and 3. Please join me in the prayer of confession uh, in unison, please. Almighty God, who sent a star to guide men to the holy child Jesus, we confess we have not always followed the light of your word. We have not searched for signs of your love in the world. We have failed to praise your Son, our Savior. We have refused peace on earth. We have questioned the good news. We have expected little and hoped for less. Forgive us, Lord, 
open our hearts to your abiding presence. May the joy of the angels become our joy. May the devotion of the shepherds become our devotion. May the vision of the wise men become our vision. May the wonder of your love be born in us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news which we receive, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. That Jesus Christ was born, lived, and died for our sins, according to the scriptures. That he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared to the women, to Peter, then to the twelve, and to many faithful witnesses. We believe he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He is our Savior, the victor over the powers of sin and death. He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Now if you would please join me in the response that's printed in the bulletin. Please read uh, in unison. Be born in us, O Lord. Be born in every part of our lives. Be born in every place where we live. Our joys and sorrows, our fears and failures, our hopes and dreams, in our work and in our worship, be born in us today. Amen. And now at this time, uh, we will take up any tithes or offerings.
remain standing for the prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your son, Jesus. May the gifts we give back to you be one way of saying thank you for all you give to us. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Like the three kings, we present our gifts to Jesus to one another in the form of chrismons. Why are they called chrismons? The word chrismons actually comes from two words, Christ and monogram. The chrismon is just a monogram of Christ. What is a monogram? Have you ever put your initials on a school item or a jacket? I have. My initials are AS, that stands for Anna Schnabel. A monogram is defined as a moffet of two or more letters, typically a person's initials, used interwoven or otherwise combined in a decorative design, used as a logo, or to identify a person's possession. Um, if we made a monogram for Jesus Christ today, we might write JC, standing for Jesus Christ. In Jesus' time, they did not write in English, they wrote in Greek. Some of the Christmas ornaments we will put on our tree today are Greek initials for the word Jesus and Christ. Some of the Christmas ornaments will be put, or, other ornaments will be a picture or a symbol. Sometimes we remember things better if we see a picture or a symbol. From the earliest times, people drew different pictures or symbols to help explain what they believed about God. In fact, the first Chris Christians designed many of these Christmas Chris symbols almost 2,000 years ago. They put them on the doorstep, utensils, catacombs, and burial chambers to make a statement about what they believed. Many of these symbols have remained until today and you will now see them on our Christmas tree. They all point to God and tell something about him. The Christmas are decorated only in white and gold. White is the color for Christmas. It refers to the Lord's purity and perfection. Several scripture references describe God with the color white. As Jesus' transfiguration, his clothes became dazzling white. In the book of Revelation, it says that Jesus will appear on a great white throne, appearing white like wool and snow. The gold points to God's glory and majesty. God instructed that much of his temple be overlaid with gold. Heaven is described as having streets of gold, and Jesus is described as wearing a golden sash when he appears in all his glory. By studying the meaning of Christmas, we give glory to God, and that is the real reason for celebrating Christmas. Listen to this reading from Isaiah 9, verses 2 through 7. Isaiah 9, verse 2 through 7. The people who walk in the darkness shall see a great light, a light that will shine on those who live in the land of the shadow of death. For Israel will be great again, filled with joy like that of the reapers when the harvest time has come, and like that of men dividing up the plunder they have won. For God will break the chains that bind his people and the whip that scorches them, just as he did when he destroyed the vast hope of the Midianites by Gideon's little band. In that glorious day of peace, there will no longer be the issuing of battle gear, no more blood-stained uniforms of war. All will be burned, for unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. These will be his royal titles, Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. His ever-expanding peaceful government will never end. He will rule with perfect fairness and justice from the throne of his father David, and he will bring true justice and peace to all the nations of the world. This is going to happen because the Lord of Heaven's armies has dedicated himself to it. Please join in singing verse 1 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, found on the screen, or number 211 in the hymnal.
We will begin decorating our Christmas tree. The first symbols uh, are the nativity symbols. Will the people bring the appropriate chrismans and place them on the tree after the scripture passage referring to that symbol is read? Thank you. The Epiphany Star. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the days of Herod the king, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Matthew 2 verses 1 and 2. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright morning star, Revelation 22:16 b The Epiphany star was placed over the manger in Bethlehem to show the wise men the way to find the Christ child. It is a symbol representing God's guiding light sent to us in the Christ child. Peter speaks of the morning star rising in our hearts and guiding our past. Please join in the response printed in the bulletin. With heart and soul, we rejoice, for the Epiphany Star reminds us of God's morning star rising over our lives. Please bring the stars forward as we sing verses 1 and 2 of We Three Kings, found on the screen or number 254 in the hymnal.
The manger. In those days a decree went out from the Caesar Augustus that Caesars should be taken of the entire Roman world. Everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph went up to the Nazareth in Galilee to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he, he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And Mary gave birth to her, her first son, I mean her firstborn a son. She wrapped him in swaddling cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them and left in the end. Luke chapter 2, one, verses 1 through 7. Please join in the response printed in the bulletin. With heart, heart soul, we rejoice. For the manger reminds us of the humility which is God's son in the form of a baby. Let us join in the Please bring mangers forward as we sing all three verses of Away in a Manger found on the screen or, two, or number 217 in the hymn, hymnal. Number 217, Away in a Manger. <laughs>
right that we rejoice, that we honor him, that we sing his praise. For the glory of God is about him. Yes, the love of God is greater than all the celestial splendor of the heavenly host. In that love, he gave up his life and innocent suffering. Like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter. Yet the powers of death could not contain that love. The powers of sin could not break that love. Now our Redeemer lives. The Chalice. As they were eating, Jesus took a small loaf of bread, blessed it, broke it apart, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take and eat, for this is my body. He then took a cup of wine, gave thanks for it, and gave it to them, and said, Each one drink from it, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many of the forgiveness of sins. Matthew 26, 26 through 18, book 28. Please join in the response printed in the bulletin. We sing to honor him who took the cup of our suffering and the drink of our sorrow. Please bring the chalices forward as we sing verse 1 of There's a Fountain Full of Blood on the screen or, to, or page 622 in the handout. Jesus born to our sorrows, that laid him down, 
We thought his troubles were a punishment from God for his own sins, but we were what wounded. Well, but he was but he was wounded and bruised for our sins. He was beaten that we might have might have peace but was lashed and we were healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, yet God has laid on Jesus the disobedience of us all. Jesus was oppressed and afflicted, yet he never said a word. He was brought as a lamb to a slaughter and a sheep before a shearer is silent. So he stood silent before the ones condemning him. Isaiah 53, 4-7 The next day John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. John 1, 29 Please join in the response printed on the bulletin. We seek to honor him. Please bring the lambs forward as we sing verses 1 and 2 of the Lamb of God on the screen or number 2113 in the faith we sing hymnal. Lamb of God. Verse 1 and 2.
Please bring the butterflies forward as we sing verses 1 and 3 of Hymn of Promise on the screen or number 707 in the hymn. sin and death, Christ becomes our Redeemer and Savior. He could, who could have conquered all in glory and power, chose instead to give himself in love. This is the joy which is for all of the people. That divine love was born at Christmas. May that love be yours, and may that love be mine. These last Christmas ornaments we bring point to the victorious Christ who raises us up to be the one with God. And he said to them, Follow me and I will take follow me and I will make make you fishers of men. Matthew four nineteen. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, Jesus looked up to heaven, blessed them and divided them. Then he gave the loaves and the fish to his disciples to serve the people. They all ate and then were filled. The disciples then picked up the twelve baskets of leftover pieces. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered five thousand men plus women and children. Matthew fourteen nineteen through twenty one. The fish was a very important source of food for the people of Jesus. Time for Christians, the symbol of fish, demonstrates the God's ability to feed us spiritually through the words and the works of Christ. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and restores my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for your rod and staff comfort me. Psalm 23, verses 1 through 4. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The crook of the staff is the shepherd's tool for guiding his sheep. It is symbolic of Christ, the good shepherd. Please join me in the response printed in the bulletin. Blessing and honor, glory and power, the man that is on the throne, and to the man. Please bring the fish and the shepherd's staff forward as we sing verses 1 and 3 of He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought, on the screen or number 128 in the hymnal.
his life his love among us. He sent us his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he has loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. First John 4, 9, verses 9 and 10. The Orbor symbolized the world, and with a cross the tribe of Christ is over it. Yet it was because of this that God raised him up to the heights of heaven and gave him a name which is above every other name. That or at the same of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2, 9-11 The Greek monogram below the Kai consists of the first letters of the Greek words for Jesus Christ. Please join us in the response printed, printed in your bulletin. Wisdom and thanksgiving. Glory and power to him that sits on the throne, and to the Lamb forever and ever. Amen and amen. Please read the cross and warp in the load of time forward as we sing together Jesus' name above all names. Two times on the screen, or over 2071, in the face we sing him real. We'll sing Jesus' name above all names two times. <laughs>
Shall we pray? Please pray with me. Almighty God, your glory and majesty glow through the chrismon symbols of Christ. May these chrismons ever remind us of your love entering our lives. May these gifts that we have hung upon the tree become gifts of comfort and joy that we share with others. May we sing of redemption's happy dawn, for Jesus Christ is born in Bethlehem, through the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Amen. And if you would please remain standing for the blessing of the Chrismon tree with the song, uh, Blessing of the Chrismon tree, Song 2, O Christmas Tree.
Thank you.